Today we're talking about conic sections and conic sections refers to this family of shapes that you can get from slicing this arrangement of cones, sort of two cones on top of each other with their points touching. Uh, this includes circles, ellipses, parabolas, hyperbolas. So you can see here if you slice a cone um, sort of perpendicular to this orientation of these two cones, you'd get a perfect circle. If you tilt that a little bit, you're going to get an ellipse, an oval shape. If you uh, slice the cone so that it hits both cones along the side, you're going to get something called a hyperbola. And today we're going to talk about parabolas. And this happens when you slice through one of the cones diagonally, you get this shape of a parabola. And these problems, we are being asked to graph parabolas, both upward and downward opening and left and right opening parabolas. So you're probably most familiar with an upward or downward opening parabola because it has this x squared term. And here we have this equation 3x squared plus 18x minus y plus 28. The first thing you want to do for this, if you see x squared, then you want to solve for y. So in this case, it's pretty easy. You just add y to each side and you get your equation for the parabola y equals 3x squared plus 18x plus 28. And just looking ahead down in this one, we have a y squared term. That means this is going to be a sideways opening parabola. And in that case, you're going to want to solve for x. So we'll come to that in a minute. We've solved this equation for y, first of all. And then what we need to do is put it in that form where you have some number times x minus some number usually they call this h uh, squared plus some other number k. We're going to do this by completing the square down here to get this, this perfect square term. So let's see. I'm just going to focus on this chunk, the x squared and x term. And I think actually what I'm going to do first is uh, factor out a 3. And then we'll get x squared plus 6. Sorry, 6x. And then to complete the square here, Get my plus 28 still hanging out here. Uh, to make this a perfect square, what I do is I take this 6, I divide it by 2, and then I square it. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So I have a plus 9 there. And you can uh, go ahead and check my work on that. But this is going to be x plus 3 squared. So now we've got y equals 3 times x plus 3 squared. Now, I added something in here. It looks like I added 9, but remember this 3 is out here. So what I really did was I added 27. So to balance this equation, I have to subtract 27 as well. And I'll do that out here with this 28 that was left over. And that's pretty nice because it makes for um, uh, some easy math. 28 minus 27 is just 1. So there I have my equation. And I get the vertex from the point h, k. So we have a plus 3 here. In the formula, we're supposed to subtract that. So this uh, number is going to get a negative sign. So my vertex is negative 3, 1. And we can just go ahead and plot that negative 3, 1 right there. And then to finish graphing this, we just want uh, a few other points. And we can just make a table. Put in some x values and some y values. And usually what I like to do, this is an upward opening parabola because the coefficient of the x squared term is positive. So what I like to do is just uh, go to the right and the left one space. So we'd have uh, a negative 2 and a negative 4. They're going to have the same values. Let's plug in a negative 2 into our equation here. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 squared times 3 is 3 plus 1 is 4. And you'll find the same, you get the same value with a 4. So it looks like we go up here and here. And then you can maybe go one more point, uh, put in a negative 1 and negative 5. Those should be the same. Let's see here, that's 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1, so that's 13. And that's going to be off my graph here, but you get the general idea. And once you've got those points, you can sketch in your, your parabola. This is a, a skinny squished one, which makes sense because it's got that multiplier of 3 
out here. Now, when we graph a sideways parabola, there are a couple of little differences. So first of all, as I said, we're going to solve for x. So I'm going to add x to both sides. And I get x equals 2y squared plus 20y. Oops, 20y plus 55. And again, um, let's see, I can factor out a 2 first. So 2 times y squared plus 10y. And then leave room to complete the square, and I've got my plus 55. So to complete the square here, I'm going to take this 10. I divide it by 2. And then I add, I, I square that to get 25. And what I've done here is I've actually added 2 times 25. So I have to subtract 50 to balance this equation. And the square here is y plus 5 squared. Foil that out if that seems confusing to you, and you'll get this. OK, so we've got x equals 2 times y plus 5. Uh, and let's see, 55 minus 50 is 5. Now, when we find the vertex here, things are reversed because we've got the y in here instead of the x. So this piece right in here is the negative y coordinate. And this piece is the x coordinate. So our vertex here is going to be 5, negative 5. So just the reverse of the way we did it for the upward or downward opening one. Let's go ahead and plot that. 5, negative 5, right there. And now this is uh, got a positive exponent on the y term. So it's going to be opening to the right, going out this way. So we want to take a point that's uh, 1 up and down on the y, so a negative 4 and a negative 6. Let's make a little chart here. And here, we're um, plugging in y and calculating x. So I'm going to put in a negative 4 and negative 6 for y. If I put in a negative 4 here, this is 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2 plus 5 is 7. And negative 6 will give me the same thing. So negative 4 uh, on the y and 7 on the x. It's easy to get confused when you turn it on the side like this. And then we should probably do one more point. Uh, let's take negative 3 on the y and negative 7 on the y. Those should calculate out to the same things. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 plus 5 is 13. So that's going to be off my chart again as well, but something like this. And you get your skinny sideways opening parabola like that. So that is a little bit of work with one of the conic sections, the parabola, and how to graph both the, uh, the up and down ones and the, the sideways opening ones.